So that was another thing that he brought that that the lender brought up, which I thought was very good. And it's so funny because I was talking to an owner the other day and he, I, and I just, and he, he said, he said, he said, I really want to have, like, I can't even remember what the numbers was. I really want to have X amount of dollars, you know, for the property. And I was like, I just, honestly, it's really not worth that much. I said, the bank is really only going to finance like, you know, whatever, 800,000 and you want like one, you know, 1.2 million. You know, I said, it's not, you know, the, the, the issue is the bank isn't going to finance. And so then I said, but if you're open to it, what if I got a bank to give me the loan for the 800,000 and then you come in and you finance on, with a second on the other part of it? Would you be open to that? He said, yeah, actually, I would be open to that. And I just ran like that. I literally just learned about that like last week. And then I talked to an owner and brought it up. And he said, yeah, I'd do that. I was like, man, that's such a good strategy. So we're also going to add that to the magic letter as well, too. And which is so funny, because then I talked to another guy that hired me as a consultant to like kind of run some numbers on a deal. And he had put an offer in for a property. It was like $2.5 million dollars. And then he had, and then he had, he needs $250,000 down for the down payment. So he asked the owner if the owner would owner finance the down, the down payment to him. And the owner, the owner said, yes, which is another strategy that I think would be awesome. If you can't afford the down payment, why don't you just ask the owner to owner finance the down payment, right? If it's like, if it's super big or whatever. So and I was talking to a student today and she brought that up. She says, I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to afford like all of the down payment. Do you think that the owner would, would owner finance it? And I said, yes. I said, that is a great strategy and you should totally ask the owner. So my point is, is that over the course of the next couple of years, as more and more of these facilities come on the market, I want you to like, you know, start broadening your horizons on like how you're going to be able to fund these, because we all know that banks are becoming more and more conservative. OK, we are running our numbers right now at 25 percent down and 7 percent interest. OK, that's what we're running our numbers at, because we don't know really if we were going to even finance a loan. We don't know where that interest rate is going to be in like 90 days or 120 days. I mean, we they, they could they could they could easily raise rates from now until March. We know that, right? Because this is what you know Jerome Powell is saying. It's like through March, you know, possibly. And then we'll just hold it stable. And then they could keep it like they could keep raising the rates and then hold it stable for a year, right? You know, and you know, I think really honestly, something like that's gonna happen, right? So we need to be running our numbers at like what we're going to be paying an in interest, you know, in like, you know, the, the time that we're actually going to be closing that. And I keep telling my students this as well, too, and my virtual assistants, this is how we're doing it. This is how we're running numbers. Now, obviously, you can go and you can get an SBA loan, right? And um, you can, uh, you know, you can put, everybody thinks that you could put 10% down for SBA, but in the end, I would really calculate 15%. Because I feel like I've seen a lot of students getting SBA loans and they always say 10%. And then like a week or two before closing, they come back and say 15%. They always do this. So I would say, especially if you're a new, um, if you're a newbie, because the lender that came in and talked to us at the mastermind, he said newbies are really hard. Like they're not going to do 15, they're not going to do 10%. They'll do 15%. Right. So um yeah, so uh, so run your numbers. If you're going to do an SBA loan, you run your numbers at you know ten or fifteen percent based on the experience that you have. But still, the interest rate is prime prime plus one, and we've seen now prime plus two and prime plus three, right? Depending on your experience, like you know with SBA, so you want to be really careful with that. So you know, and then you go to a conventional bank, and it's twenty five percent down and seven percent interest. Okay. And uh, so you just want to be kind of leery about the financing, you know, the financing that's coming up over the course of the next couple of months. And so uh, going like going on to Crexy and uh, in finding deals, you know, you want to make sure you're running your numbers, especially if they're running them high. You want to be running your numbers at the correct number right at the closing table for the closing table. And uh, so, you know, one of the fastest ways for you to make money in self-storage, in my personal opinion, is going directly to the owner 
and then giving the owner lots of options, lots of options. All right. And I'm going to be talking about creative deal structuring more and more over the course of the next like six months to a year, because this is what like, this is what's going to really start um, happening. And, and actually I started in real estate in 2010 and uh, I was, I did rehabs is what I did. So for five years I did rehabs and then I got pregnant with Lillian. And then that's when I moved over to storage because I wanted to stay home with her and be with her. And um, so, but that was like in 2010 and 2011, 2013, like those years, right? If you think about it, I don't know if anybody was has was has been investing in real estate since that long, but in 2010, 11, and 12, there was not a lot of lenders out there. I mean, they had all gone bust, right? And there was a, there were not a lot of banks that were lending. But there were a lot of like hard money lenders that were like, it was like crazy, like percentages, like 15 and five points and all this stuff. So you, you need, so, so really I had to, I had to really be, learn how to be creative. So I'm really actually blessed for like going through that time period because two things that I learned during that time, that time frame as an investor, one of them was how to raise money right? Which is something that you're going to have to be focusing. And I will be focusing on this as well, too, for everybody, every Monday over the course of the next you know, year, how are we going to raise money? How are we going to finance these things? And you know, what kind of creative deal structuring can we do in order to close a deal? 